In this demo, I'll show you how to use synthetic data to train an AI, even if you don't have enough ground truth data. Next, I want to show you a real world example of this workflow in action. Let me show you the Sierra Cars RX3. This car is so cool. It has 200 horsepower, but it weighs less than a thousand pounds. It does zero to 60 in 2.8 seconds. This thing is awesome. Even cooler, the owner, Cole Powelson, has given us the CAD models for the actual vehicle, and he's given us permission to use those CAD models in experiments and to share that data with you. And he's given me a few real panels that I can use to demonstrate this workflow. Now, what I've done is I took the nose panel you see right here in the front, I took a screwdriver, I took a deep breath and I scratched this actual panel with a screwdriver. So let's pretend that I'm an engineer at Sierra Cars and we're shipping cars out with scratches in the panels. It's my job to train an AI to recognize those scratches and it's only happened a few times and so I just don't have very much ground truth data. I don't even have access to the cars because they've been shipped. So now what do I do? The first thing I would do would be to take the ground truth images that I already have, annotate those by hand, and then use those to train an AI model and just see how close I am. And so that's exactly what I did. Now, you could use a variety of training models here. You could use Tau. In this case, I used our partner RoboFlow software. And then you should check it out if you're looking for a solution. So let's just take a look at one image here. As you can see, I took a picture with my camera, I annotated those in RoboFlow, and then I trained it. And so let's take a look at that. If I go to the versions tab here, that's where my trained models are. I tried to train with 25 images and then with 50, and neither trained very well. Let's take a look at the 50 image training set. I've got some ground truth images off to the side. If I drag one of those in, it will try to recognize the scratches. If I lower the confidence threshold, Oh, it's just really terrible. I mean, let's try a different image. As you can see, this is an absolute failure. 50 images was clearly not enough to train this model. So now what? In the past, there was only one option. You had to wait for more images, however long that took. But there's a new option. Now you can use NVIDIA Omniverse for synthetic data generation to create images without waiting. Let me show you how to do that. To train an AI model with synthetic data, we're gonna use a workflow that's really very similar to a traditional AI training workflow. We're just gonna substitute the real images with synthetic data that we've made with NVIDIA Omniverse. So this whole process of generating synthetic data the training AI is an iterative process and it's a team effort. So in the first step, you'll work with technical artists to import data. That means you might work with an engineering designer or an industrial des designer to get a 3D model. And you could work with a graphic designer to use a tool like Adobe Substance Designer to generate textures of whatever defect you're trying to replicate. You'll also generate a background environment and you'll bring those together to create a scene. From there, you'll start to work with developers. With the developers, you'll work with Replicator to create a Replicator run that can randomize any attributes of your USD scene that you need to create enough variety in your synthetic data to train that AI. And it's gonna be easier to iterate on this process than it will be to try to get it right the first time. So work with your developers to come up with a randomization script using Replicator. From there, you generate your synthetic data. By the way, it'll already be annotated, so that's great. And once you have annotated data, you can feed that into the training system of your choice and train it. Once it's trained, you validate the data. And if your model's good enough, great, you're good to go. If not, you just go back and you add whatever assets you need, you add whatever variety to your scene, or you add whatever randomizations into Replicator you need, to get that model trained right. Let me show you the scene that I put together to generate synthetic images of a scratch on a Sierra Cars RX3 nose panel. What you might notice first is it looks like we're in somebody's garage. 
And that's because I took a, a my camera and I took a LiDAR scan of my garage. Here's my shop, LiDAR scanned. Then if you look up, I added a light about where my light was in real life. I got a CAD model of the nose panel and put it in here. And you'll see this floating block with a scratch directly above below it. So this block is this decal proxy that we're using to project a decal onto the panel. And in this case, that decal is a scratch. So if I move this block around, it moves the scratch around. And if I rotate this block, it rotates the scratch. Along the same lines, if I change the scale of this block, it's going to make that scratch longer or shorter. And if I change this other scale number, it's going to make it thinner or thicker. Uh oh, there we go. Nice. That's there's a thick one, really thick. So we can use this block to control our scratch. We've got a panel in there. We've got good lighting. It seems like a reasonable start. And I didn't, you know, this was my first time doing this and I really wasn't sure what it took to train a model. And so I decided to start simple. Let's make this a little shorter, a little thinner. Uh, we hide this cube. We can move it around even though it's hidden. Uh, what I did was I used this extension and you can input max and min defect dimensions and position your rotation. And you can say how many frames you want to generate. And we can use this extension to configure replicator, run it and save synthetic data to the directory of our choice. So that's what I did. I picked one camera angle. I moved the scratch around on the panel and I did that a thousand times for a thousand images just to see how well it would train. And I'm going to show you those results next. Here I've uploaded those synthetic data images to RoboFlow and you can see them all together. There are about a thousand of them and they've been annotated by Replicator. Here's one image and you can see it looks like a body panel in my shop that's got a scratch on it. And if you look at the previous window, you can see that these scratches are spread around. They have different locations and different orientations. You can also see that my camera angle is the same. The reflectivity is the paint is the same and the scene is the same for all these images. Maybe that will be perfect, but let's see how well it performs. So to see how well my model performed, let's go to the versions tab and then I can drag a ground truth image into this panel to see how well it worked. And if I lower my confidence threshold, there you go. With somewhat low confidence, it does correctly identify a scratch. Let's try a different image. This one, once again, it finds one scratch with, you know, a little bit low confidence. I think we need to improve this model. It's not good enough, but I've got to say, I was impressed with the results with such a simple set of synthetic data. I think for the next step, we could either go back and generate more synthetic data, or we could use some of the ground truth images we already have to refine the model. I know there's a lot of variation we can add pretty easily with Replicator. And so let's go back to Omniverse. Let's add some of that variation and let's see if we can improve our synthetic data. We were just looking at my first try in RoboFlow. We couldn't get it to train very well. So let's go ahead and add some variation to the scene and see if we can do better. I went ahead and added a few things. You know, one thing I noticed is that when I was taking pictures, I wasn't always taking them from the same angle. So what I did is I made a specific camera for my shot and I put it on in the transform and then I made it. So I, I put this camera arm in there and now I can change the angle of my shot as if I'm moving that camera around. And I thought, you know, I'm doing that in real life. That would probably add, make it work a little bit better. Another thing I noticed is that my real photos were more reflective. The paint was more reflective than my, my synthetic data. And so I thought, you know, 
I should take this material and let me find it. Here's my car paint material. And if I go down to the clear coat roughness, I can actually change this value and make it more or less reflective. And I thought I should make it, make the reflectivity somewhat random. Uh, so I get some variability there. Another thing I noticed is that that panel was not always in the same position in my scene. Uh, what I did there, I can't move the panel around unless I move the decal with it. And so I thought it would be easier if I actually took my shop and made it so you can rotate the shop underneath the body panel. Really it's the same effect. And so I added that ability to rotate the shop with the panel. Oh, I also thought, you know, I should make it so you can move this around a little bit, right? There you go. So you can move the shop as well. That's just like you're moving and rotating the panel on the shop. I thought, you know, I, so now you can move the panel, you can rotate it, you can change the, that clear coat reflectivity, you could move the camera around to different angles. And the last thing I thought is, you know, I should try some different scenes. And so I put in three different scenes. I put in the shop you see here. I did an outdoor scene. And then finally I did this warehouse. Here we go. It's got some nice reflections in the floor. I thought, yeah, this is, it even reflects some, some of the surroundings into the clear coat. I thought this would be a good one to make sure that that model isn't training on the reflections or the environment or the camera angle or any of those factors, but we really want to just zero in on that scratch. Oh, you know what else I added? I made it so that we could make the scratch thicker or thinner and longer or shorter. And so we've got, I added a whole bunch of variability. Uh, the way I did that is if you look here in the, in this extension, I went ahead and coded up the extension. I added to it these prim attributes. This lets me move the scene around, rotate the scene, change the clear cut ro uh, roughness, change the camera angle. I tweaked these defect parameters so that they would vary the defect dimensions, the thickness and the length. And so there you go. That's the variability I added to the scene. And you know, my hope was that by adding a lot more variation to my synthetic data, I would get a lot better model trained. So I dragged those images into, into RoboFlow to go ahead and train a model with them. And immediately you can see that there's a lot more variety in these images. There are all different camera angles and scratch positions. Some of the times the paint is reflective and sometimes it's not. There are all different scenes. I really feel good about this data set. And I went ahead and trained it with a few different settings. But here are, is one of my final results. Let's just see how it does. And there you go. Okay. This is much improved. It immediately recognizes one of these scratches with an 83% confidence, but I'm still not happy because it only recognizes one scratch. And as I think about it in my synthetic data, there's only ever one scratch. So it makes sense. If I reduce the confidence threshold, it, it does find another scratch. And as I've looked at different images, sometimes it'll find more than others, but in general, it finds the first scratch very easily and then struggles with more after that. And so I think the next step is going to be to bring in some ground truth data and see if we can refine this model to help it recognize more scratches. What I've done here is I've uploaded 50 ground truth images, and then I've trained models for anywhere from 10 of those up to 50 of those. And starting from where I left off with the 100% synthetic data to see how far each of these would get me. And let me show you the results. So let's start with just 10. If you recall, with 100% synthetic data, it did a great job identifying one scratch, but it struggled to identify multiple scratches. So here's an image. And already you can see that this is way better. It's not getting every scratch, it's missing a few but it got four scratches with a, with a high confidence. With just 10 ground truth images, this is performing very well. My hunch is that if we had a Jetson with a camera hooked up to a display, and we just kind of took a video of this and from different angles, it would catch all of those scratches with pretty high confidence from some angles. And you'd kind of get a pretty good idea of what was going on, even with 10 ground truth images. 
Now let's look at 50. So here's that same image, and there you go. It's got more of the scratches. Let's lower that confidence. And okay, doesn't quite get this last scratch, but it is really performing well. I'm just so happy with how this model turned out. Oh, and there you go. I just picked another image at random and it's detecting all of the scratches on the panel. And so I'm really confident that if you took a Jetson with this one and a camera and put it at different angles, then you'd catch all those scratches with this model. And all it took was 50 ground truth images. So with just 10 ground truth images, we saw a huge improvement. And with 50 ground truth images, we've, I've got a model that I am very happy with. In summary, I've shown you how to take just a few ground truth images, combine those with as many synthetic data images as you need, and use those to train a model. And I followed this workflow. We got a CAD data, textures using Adobe Substance, and we got a few scenes. We mixed those together and used Replicator to just randomize the position of the scratch at first. We generated a thousand images to use from that and tried to train a model with those. That gave us a pretty good idea of the additional variation we needed in our model. So we looped back and used Replicator to add different camera angles, different scratch thicknesses and lengths, different clear coat, reflectivities, a few different scenes, and we regenerated 1500 new synthetic data images from that. We used those to train a model and got much better performance. We then used our 50 ground truth images to refine that model and got performance that we were really happy with. 